Okay, today we're working on a Skag Freedom Z, uh, mid 2000s, early 2000s. Anyhow, uh, the owner was mowing with this, and suddenly it started to spew smoke out of it. So I went down to take a look at it. Sure enough, um, started up it'll run normal but as soon as you put it under load <laughs> well let's just say the neighborhood's fogged out right now there's not going to be a mosquito problem so i did a compression check on it and it was normal um, on number two but number one was only 30 psi plus when you started it you could hear the the head gasket leaking so i drove it up uh, on one cylinder, just pulled the plug wire off and disassembled it. And sure enough, it's a head gasket. Now look at this. Does that look to you like something that just happened? Not to me. That looks like it was installed incorrectly. And that's becoming a real problem with these Kawasaki's. Uh, I've had a lot of failures over them on them all, over the last five, six years. And at first, I was blaming Kawasaki. But as I work on the motors, I, f I find that they're pretty much a good quality product. Um, and well designed, easy to work on. The issue is... The engines that are coming out of the United States, Missouri, and I'm not sure where, I don't remember where the other plant is, but those are the ones that have the quality control problems. I don't know what's going on. What? Okay, so we got to replace that head gasket. I checked the head, and it's true. It's not warp, warped. What led to this was an oil leak uh, on the crankshaft, and flywheel, that seal, crankshaft seal, and also the breather, the plate on the breather, all the bolts were loose on it. So the oil congealed, all the grass debris got in there and overheated this engine. So I got the head off, and valves and everything look good. Um, but I noticed when I looked down inside the exhaust port that the valve guide had worked its way down in into the exhaust plenum. I think what happens is when these overheat and the aluminum expands, they're just an uh, um, interference fit, these valve guides are, and they'll migrate one way or the other. Now, if they migrate up, you're going to bend push rods. When they go down, well, then your valve guide seal just is in there bouncing around, not really doing what it's supposed to. On these size engines, like this one's, I think, a 19 or something like that, um, you don't need to use your um, valve spring compressor. These springs are are small enough and have just a little bit of tension on them. So you can lay them down and uh, take a trim fork, um, something like this. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. And just depress this down. Okay, they sh look at that. They come right off. Okay. Once that's done, pull the spring off, push the valve out, okay. and now you can get to this valve guide. And what I have set up here. is a five gallon bucket that's full of sand 
and old rags. So I'll lay this in here. This is pretty much going to distribute uh, the weight and not putting pressure points uh, on the head itself. And then I use a beryllium punch. You can use brass or you can use aluminum and just drive that back down to where it needs to be. Now if it's tight that's good and I don't think that it's going to migrate back up unless this overheats again. So this one was, was tight and this doesn't damage uh, the guide in any way. If it does you can use a Dremel and just you know trim off any burrs that are inside. Small ball peen hammer. Now you can watch Terrell. I'll, I'll put a link on here where Terrell has one that migrated the opposite way and was bending valves and he'll show you how to drill this um, out and tap it and, and uh, go ahead and put a set screw in there. So this back in. It's got enough lube on it. Okay. Let me put this down a little bit. All right. So now you stuff the rag up inside the chamber, just like you would a rope if you're doing this with the head on. Put this back on. You can try it with your fingers, or you can use this to do it. Sometimes it takes a little while because the thing will snap off and hit you in the eyeball and stuff, but like that. All right. That was a pretty good launch. Try this again. Is it that when you get it on camera, this stuff never works? Maybe I'm in too much of a hurry. I don't know. Drop one of them bad boys down in there. Don't put them in backwards. They don't hold real well. Then once they're in there, you can just take this off, push it down with your fingers until they catch. There you go.